We're not giving up. From the movie Miracles from Heaven. Can you even hear me? The real Christy Beam speaks out. But I think she's making up for lost time. I really do. On today's 700 Club Interactive. Hello and welcome to 700 Club Interactive. Today we're going to tell you the story of a near tragedy that resulted in two miracles. And it's also a story that's now being told in theaters across the country. It's about a determined mother and an eight-year-old girl named Annabelle Beam. Annabelle lived in chronic pain, pain so bad that she said she just wanted to die and go to heaven with Jesus. As it turns out, a few days later, that's exactly what happened. Take a look. The tests confirm that she's very ill. There is currently no cure for Anna's condition. Doctor, please, this is our little girl. I'm scared, Mom. Me too. We're not giving up. Like a small boat on the ocean. We need a solution. We need it now. And we'll get it. How? By not losing our faith. Like how a single Free her from this. Might only have one back. Can you even hear me? I can make an explosion. <laughs> this is my fight song. Take back my life. So you're telling me that when this baby girl fell 30 feet, she hit her head just right, and it didn't kill her, and it didn't paralyze her. It healed her. Yes. Well, that's impossible. This is a little hard to believe. And there's a lot of people out there that are just looking for publicity. A lot of people think we're crazy. You either roll with it or you get rolled on. He told me I'd be fine. I've still got a lot of fight left. Who told you you'd be fine? Well, joining us now is the real mother, uh, not Jennifer, but this is Christy Beam, and she's the mother of Annabelle, and here to tell us about the real story and what really happened. Underneath all of this, it just seems to be an absolutely incredible miracle of healing. Absolutely. What was it like for you to have a daughter come to you and say, Mommy, the pain's so bad, I just want to die. I, I, I don't want this anymore. I will never forget that day, ever, in my life. I will never forget Annabelle saying that to me, those words coming out of her mouth. And we were in the hospital when it happened, and I just crawled in the bed with her and just wrapped my arms around her, and we both cried. Like, what else do you do when your baby wants to die? You just love them. And I prayed. Well, did, did you get mad at God? I mean, that, I'm, I'm trying to put myself in that position. And, you know, God, what, what do we do to, to deserve this or to... I asked all those questions. I absolutely asked all those questions. Why Anna? Why us? Why me? What, what have we done? And what can we do to fix it? You know, if I've done something wrong, then I'll do it right. You know, you begin to get to a place where you almost don't barter with God, but you're like, whatever I did wrong, tell me and I'll make it right. Because your child's suffering is probably the worst thing you can endure. Did you get any answers to this prayer? Eventually, we got many answers, and there wasn't anything we had done wrong. Um, it was just part of God's plan, but God's healing was the greatest part of her plan, His plan for her. Hmm. You know, well, when I get into situations where I, I want to get mad at God, I, I, I go back a lot to John chapter 9 and the story of the man born blind, mm -hmm. and the disciples ask him, you know, was it his fault? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and if he's born that way, he hadn't yet done it, so is that just? And then is it his parents' fault? And, and well, if, if his parents did something, is it just to have it happen to the baby? And I love the answer Jesus gives, neither. Neither. This happened that the glory of God might be revealed. We went over that and over that during our time of struggle. It's so interesting you bring that up because we did. We read that story over and over. Then the glory of God did get revealed. Oh, my word. Did I mean, he it reveal just, it? I mean, it just is amazing that, uh, I mean, uh, all right, well, uh, for, for people that don't know the story, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if I got ahead, but anyway, if, for people that don't know the story, here she is. She's got an incurable medical condition, and she's outside playing with her sisters, yes. and a tragedy happens. Absolutely. Uh, and she falls into a cottonwood tree, and it's like a 30-foot fall? Yes, sir. Yes. Um, and I imagine you thought at the time 
she's now, in addition to the medical condition, there's now an injury. Absolutely. What, what, what went through your head? You know, at first, um, I didn't realize the reality of what had happened. I thought that Annabelle had just climbed and gotten stuck up in a tree. I didn't realize when Abby came to tell me Annabelle's fallen in a tree that she tru truly had fallen. Then whenever she was non-responsive, I thought maybe God answered her prayer. Maybe he let her die. Mm. And so many emotions went through me. You can't have her, God. Like, not now, not ever. Don't do this with while I'm alive. But then I just prayed and I just cried out to God, don't take her, don't take her and protect her and love her. Um, and then so many things came into play, the firefighters, the care flight, and they were saying they've never had anybody fall 30 feet and not suffer paralysis or broken bones. So then there's that, that terror in your mind. What is she going to look like when she comes out? Um, but God had it all under control. Hmm. Every single moment was orchestrated perfectly. Well, when did you know she was actually okay? Well, when she came out of the tree and we went to the hospital, they ran every test you could imagine. And then the doctor said, there's nothing wrong with her. He, his words were, Jesus must have been with that little girl in that tree. And he wow. said, there's she, minor concussion. We want to keep her overnight. But there's nothing wrong with her. She's fine. And as, as one day turned into another, her stomach problems, we began to realize something's very different. Yes. Um, wh when did you find out that she had had an encounter the with next day, Jesus. yeah, the next day when we got out of the hospital, we were driving down the road in the truck, and she just turned to me, and she said, um, you know, Mommy, I went to heaven when I was in that tree, and I just looked at her, and I said, really? And I, I wish, I joke and say, I wish I'd said something brilliant and profound, but I didn't. All I said was, really? Because then my first thought was, how hard did you hit your head, baby? <laughs> um, but, you know, she was so serious. This is all a brain injury. Yes, I did. Mm. But she was so articulate about things that Annabelle would not have known, some things she said, the way she said them. And then she shared a, a fair amount that day. But mm -hmm. then as days passed, she would just come and give me tidbits. Um, and I would write them down, get them wherever I could on a napkin on my phone. And I began to compile all of her memories that she would share. And it was just too, I mean, she lived it. There was no denying Annabelle lived her, her what she was sharing. Um, your initial reaction was you really hit your head hard. Yes. Um, and at what point did you get to something really happened? Mm -hmm. When, when was that? What convinced you? What convinced me was we had had two miscarriages. Mm -hmm. I had told the girls because a friend had had a miscarriage and they were very concerned. And I said, they happen. They're unfortunate, but mommy has had two. And I went on to have, you know, three beautiful girls. So God still has a plan for our friend. Well, that's all I'd ever told them. And then Annabelle said that she saw a little girl in heaven. And she said she asked God, because the little girl looked like me and Abby, our oldest, and she asked God, who is that little girl? And he said, Annabelle, that's your sister. That to me was all I needed because I told the girls I had two miscarriages, but really one of them was never a viable pregnancy. And Annabelle didn't know that. Mm. So why would she not have said I saw two little girls in heaven? Does that make sense? Yeah, it does make sense. So that's what I knew. Okay. Something profound happened. Something profound happened. Um. And something profound did happen. Mm -hmm. And she did have an encounter with Jesus. And Jesus told her, you're healed. Mm -hmm. Everything's going to be okay. Uh, and there's some firemen coming for you. Yes. I mean, he even tells it, describes what, tells her what's going to happen mm -hmm. when she's back in the tree. Mm -hmm. um, and the, you know, I'm going to send an angel with you. Mm -hmm. um, and that... Uh, your daughter says it's the light from the angel that allowed her to see the rope coming down. And she also says that that's, we talk about it in the book, so in detail about how she says that's why she was so peaceful. Hmm. Um, because the angel sat there with me, and the firefighters could not understand. She never cried. She never called out. She was, when she was alert, yeah. finally, she was so peaceful. And they said it was so eerie, and now we know why. I think if I, if I was trapped into a tree, I'd be panicked. Absolutely. 
uh, and I'd be yelling to, you know, please get me out of this now. Yeah. And she's just peaceful. Yes, so peaceful. What, uh, from a medical standpoint, what do doctors say happened to the condition she had before she fell? They don't know. Um, they just say that all they can do is look at where she is now. Um, they say she's asymptomatic. She's on zero medications. She's been released from the, the care of the guru of pediatric gastroenterology in Boston. They don't know, but she's healed. She no longer has two incurable digestive disorders. And now she eats a lot of pizza. <laughs> she eats a lot of everything. <laughs> she is crazy. But I think she's making up for lost time. I really do. What, what do you hope people get from the movie? You know, there is such a message of hope and encouragement. And I feel like if people can walk away with new lenses in their eyes to see things differently, that God has a plan, that things may not always be perfect. We will always have struggles, but it is in His control. I think that message of hope is just so powerful. And I think people are going to feel that. Yeah, I assume you're still going through struggles in life. Oh, that, yes. You know, the miracle happens and then, okay, now, uh, do, you, do you approach those with a different view? Mm -hmm. do, do, you, do you view, okay, how is the glory of the Lord going to be revealed in this? I do. And I also have found that during times of trial and struggle, not to look down like I did before, mm. because I missed all those miracles that were going on around me before because I was so trapped in my darkness and struggle mm. that I was looking down. But now I look around and I'm like, where are you going to be faithful today, God? What miracles are, am I going to see in my life from you today, God? Because they're there. I don't want to miss them. Wow. That's a powerful lesson. Uh, that's a lesson I hope everyone takes away. Yes. Because we, we, do, we, we do get casual with the miracles that, that are happening all around us. Yes. And it's one of those great scriptures. God loves to hide. I mean, he loves to hide what he's doing. Uh, and he's looking for us to have that sort of delighted surprise that, uh, wow, you really did that for me. Uh, and if we just look for it mm -hmm. and, and just experience that and just be in that moment with it. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it really changes everything. It, it, how you look at things, are you expecting God to move? Are you expecting the glory to happen? Then uh, it does. Absolutely. And you, and you get to say it. You get to witness it. Mm -hmm. um, what has it done for your faith? It has definitely strengthened my faith. It has definitely taught me that... Um, that there's always hope, that He has a plan. Before I wondered, you know, are you involved in this, God? Are you aware that this is going? Are you hearing my prayers? But He didn't, He, would, he wasn't just hearing them, He was listening and answering them, and He was intimately involved the whole time. He wasn't just this big God in heaven watching it all happen, He was intimately involved with me. And it has strengthened my faith greatly to know that Every moment of every day, he loves me, and he loves sweet Annabelle more than I can love her, and, and all my girls, and that amazes me. Hmm. What, what's happened with Annabelle? Um, she's amazing. She is so, you know, we call her an old soul because she understands things that I don't understand still. Um, she has a grasp for, for him and for the kingdom and for death. I mean, she's just so deep. But then this is the same little girl who can be so deep, but then you say the word chicken and she's on the floor. She thinks the word chicken is hilarious and she just cracks up and laughs and laughs and laughs. It's hysterical. I mean, she's so full of joy and she's just grateful that she's well. Amen. Amen. Well, let me encourage you. If you want to know more about this, if you want more of Christie's story, Annabelle's story, you're going to need a ticket. And Miracles from Heaven opens in theaters uh, today, March 16th, just in time for Easter. And Christy, thank you for this. This has been a real encouragement to me. Thank you for having me. And I know it will be an encouragement for anybody going through struggles. Can you look to see how God's going to reveal His glory? Yes. Uh, wonderful message. We'll be right back with more of 700 Club Interactive right after this. <music> 